welcome back my dear students today i'm going to discuss about design of bearings that is unit number 1 so before going to start this unit you better go for introduction video and listen carefully so that might help you to understand much easier way uh, what we are doing now especially the unit 1 syllabus thank you so let us start again coming to introduction bearing is a machine element which supports another moving machine element that is known as journal nothing but a shaft it permits a relative motion between them while carrying any load you know here we have uh, journal and bearing we have a contact surfaces so due to the contact there is a rubbing action may be present so the rubbing action is Uh, creates some friction and heat generation also sometime useful power might be lost during the power transmission that means to overcome the friction so to avoid this we must provide lubrication between them not only to reduce the friction it is an important to reduce the heat generation between the rubbing surfaces so due to the heat generation what will happen the oil may burn right so the car, due to the regular rubbing action the friction will generate due to the friction wear and tear they not only wear and tear generate some heat that heat also uh, crosses the firing point of the oil what will happen the oil might be burned so it is very important for us to keep the body or keep the contact surface under our control or within the temperature limits so that a small fluid layer must be provided between the bearing say for example some types of bearings we have a gap between some clearance between them in between the clearance we are going to provide liquid in between the clearance sometimes we provide ball balls or rollers depends upon the application depends upon the requirement the clearance might be filled okay i will explain with diagram okay don't worry i will explain further the diagram with an animation then you came to know very easily what is the difference between a, a sliding bearing and roller bearing something like that okay usually for rubbing rubbing is a lubrication uh, pro, pro, to usually the lubrication oils maybe we are uh, using vegetable oils or silicon oils or petroleum mineral oils and greases etc are going to be used to reduce the friction you know right so let us go for a working of a bearing clearly so before going to start the working of the bearing we must know uh, what is the necessary to use the bearing why need we need to choose the bearing let's start so before going to start what is the working of the bearing we must know why we need to use the bearings so for example i have a shaft right so i have a prime mover so called a motor or a generator like this this motor have a shaft this shaft is coupled to the long shaft so what will happen if you couple directly if wear and tear may be takes place between these two connected surfaces also the other side we are going to connect a bell drive or a chain drive or a rope drive whatever the requirement so our aim is to transfer power from prime mover to so other useful device so in between we are using a shaft so we cannot couple the shaft directly to the machine so for that we are using this bell drive or so called so if you couple the shaft other side for the bell drive and other side for the prime mover what will happen so these are the moving surfaces i mean rotationary surfaces what will happen while the rotationary surfaces are present so this causes friction this causes wear and tear this causes causes unnecessary power loss and heat generation so to avoid this we are going to use a bearing or a lubrication or or grease whatever the requirement we are going to use this we, if you use grease or whatever so what will happen here the friction will be reduced or minimized here also if you use any uh, lubricating surface or liquid it is also help help us to reduce uh, wear and tear and the friction so instead of lubrication oils we are going to we can use uh, bearings also to provide support 
and to provide lubrication facility. How? Let's see. See, this is the shaft, long continuous shaft. Here we have some bearings. So this is a bearing. This is journal. See, this is journal. I mean nothing but shaft. This is housing. A housing we have some clamping surfaces to clamp the shaft to hold the shaft. So these bearings can hold the shaft, long continuous shaft to avoid bending movement. Also it per permits a relative motion between them. So shaft easily rotate without any uh, disturbance. Also it gives a lot of support for us and also it gives the lubrication facility to power some oil. You know this is nothing but a oil hole. So you can power the lubrication oil between them to, uh, to avoid the jerky movement while transferring the power so that is the advantage of the bearing so you can use a journal bearing or you can use a ball bearing so i already mentioned that bearing is a component which supports another machine element it is known as journal it permits relative motion between them must this is very very important relative motion between them is the key part the relative motion is should be provided by the bearings right while carrying some load so it, ha it must have a capable capacity to carry some load right so this is the sliding contact bearing i told you that the sliding action may be take place between them so this is a journal or a shaft this is a small clearance this is outside housing housing so in between the clearance we are going to power some oil so this is oil inlet so you can power oil between them to avoid uh, metal to metal contact if metal to metal contact takes place what will happen so that causes unnecessary sound and friction as well as heat generation right so that is about the importance of a sliding contact bearing so what is rolling contact bearing so instead of oil we are going to use some rollers right now types I can say sliding contact bearing, rolling contact bearings are the two different types we can easily understand. Uh, the purpose of the depends upon the purpose, depends upon the load, depends upon the condition. We are going to choose either sliding contact bearing or rolling contact bearing. So sliding contact bearing is also termed as journal bearing. Rolling contact bearing again there may be two types. One is ball, another one is roller. This is very simple. From a simple figure, you can understand what is rolling contact bearing or ball. See in this figure, this is the outer racing. This is the inner racing. Uh, in between, we have a case. In case, we have some balls. So, these balls can permit the relative motion between outer ring and inner ring. Inner ring is mounted to our shaft. So, shaft can rotate easily and it can it can provide the relative motion between them instead of ball you can use rollers if you use roller that is roller roller bearing if you use ball it is nothing but ball bearing so this may be a single series or single groove or double groove or different types are maybe there okay this is the best example for a rolling contact bearing now coming to classification of the bearing so depends upon the direction of the load the bearings may be two types one is radial load Another one is trust. So radial load bearing is nothing but radial load, radial bearings. If you if the bearings carry trust or axial load, it is nothing but trust bearing. So this is the example for a radial bearing. So here in the radial bearing, you can see a shaft that is fixed element, right? So a load is applied on it. So rotation is clockwise. Maybe example a clockwise. So load is acted 90 degrees at perpendicular to it. So rotation is like this and uh, load is acted like this. Right? So that is the example for radial loading. So load is acted radially. What is thrust bearing if load is acted axially? See here load is acted 90 degrees to the center. So here the center axis, the load is acted in, uh, in, in line. In line the center line. So this is nothing but radial load. If 90 degrees load is acted to the axis of rotation that is thrust bearing. 
So this is the basic difference between a radial bearing and a trust bearing. Second one, depending upon the nature of contact, as I already told you that the sliding contact bearing, rolling contact bearing. So fixed element or moving element are two different ones. So there is no um, balls or any casings are provided between them. If the sliding is takes place directly. So that is nothing but sliding contact bearing. But in between we have some rollers or balls are maybe presented between the fixed element and the moving element. Then it is said to be rolling contact bearing. Sliding contact bearing further classified into three types. Number one, full journal bearing. What is full journal bearing? It is covered completely. The fixed element is covered completely to the moving element. That is full journal bearing. See, we have some eccentricity. So this is the axis of fixed element. This is the center of moving element. We have some clearance between them. Here we have the clearance might be changed. Right? Second one is partial journal bearing. That means it is not covered completely. The fixed element is not covered completely. So 120 degrees of uh, area only covered. Remaining is floated. So this shaft is floated on a bearing. So it can carry some load and it can be rotated. So but we have some clearance between them. That is partial journal bearing. Third one fitted bearing. So in this fitted bearing, the distance between the two centers are very less and it is completely fitted into the fixed element. The moving element is fitted into the moving fixed, sorry, fixed element. So the angle is same, but the centers are might be changed. The center of moving element, center of fixed element is very, the distance between them is very less. Eccentricity is very, very less. That is fitted journal bearing. This is very, very important, guys. Please listen carefully. So the layer we need to provide, that is thickness of the layer of the lubricant is very, very important for any sliding contact bearing. So thick film bearing. In this thick film, the name indicates the bearing, the lubrication thickness is much more. So we have uh, considerable thickness between journal and bearing. So that is nothing but hydrodynamic bearing. That means there is not at all any contact between the two elements. So there is no direct metal to metal contact between them. Completely fluid is occupied. Not even a, not even a partial contact also be takes place. So that is nothing but hydrodynamic bearing or thick film bearing. Second one, thin film bearing, that means the layer thickness is very, very less, that is very thin. In, in this such type of bearings, what will happen, there may be a partial metal to metal contact might be, takes place. So this is also known as boundary lubricated bearings. Third one, zero film bearing. So there may be, there is no oil, lubricated oil present between them. There is a direct metal to metal contact will be, takes place. Last but not least, hydrostatic or externally pressurized lubricated bearing. This is nothing but hydrostatic bearings, also known as hydrostatic bearings. It can carry the study loads without any relative motion between them. This just carry loads. So to achieve this, we need to sub provide some external force between two contact surfaces. That is nothing but pressurized lubricate lubricant must be provided between two elements. That is nothing but hydrostatic or externally pressurized lubricated bearing. These four are very, very important for short questions. So, try to remember all this. Next important one, uh, working mechanism. How the mechanism is works. See, at rest, at low speed, at high speed, there might be some pressure will be developed between them. So, depends upon the speed, the re relative action may be changed. Relative action may be changed, that what will happen, it leads to change in pressure wedge. See here at rest, load actor steadily and metal to metal contact directly takes place. So there is no rotationary movement is there. Then what will happen, the journalist directly touches the fixed element. While in low speed, so for example, it is rotating in anticlockwise direction, the load is acted downwards. What will happen, the centers might be changed. See, you can see the change in center here, right? So, at low speed, there may be a partial metal to metal contact will be takes place. Compared to at rest, the metal to metal, or metal, to metal contact is very less. But while high speed, the metal to metal contacts almost 
rectified or almost nullified. So what will happen? It is floated between fixed element. So journal is floated and the pressurized oil will create some wedge that is pressure. See like this. Here we have some pressure will be developed against to the gravity. See this shaft is always acts vertically downwards. But this pressurized fluid what will happen due to the rotationary which is centrifugal force. It will be acted upward. So pressure is gradually increased if the narrow place is so if the area is decreased just like uh, when you are sorry just like venturi meter what will happen if the clearance is reduced the pressure will be increased the velocity of the journal is more the pressure developed between the surface is also more that avoids the metal to metal contact so this is very very important for low speed conditions sliding contact bearings are not suitable because metal to metal contacts will be takes place for high speed condition sliding contact bearings are best suitable one because due to the high speed the more velocity will generate if more velocity is generate more pressure will be developed between the two surfaces to avoid metal to metal contact that is the working mechanism of a sliding contact bearing right so next class we are going to we will discuss about properties of sliding contact bearing thank you if you have any doubt don't hesitate to ask it anytime you can contact thank you